Also with us tonight is the political editor of the Sydney Morning Herald, Peter Harcher. He's got the latest Nielsen poll, which will be in The Age and the Sydney Morning Herald newspapers tomorrow. Peter, we've heard uh, Dennis Shanahan, Shanahan sorry, earlier give us a preview of tomorrow's news poll. What do your figures show? Uh, well, ours are different. Uh, ours are 52 to 48 in favour of Labor. Uh, so that gives, compared to the news poll result that you just heard a minute ago, that gives uh, the Labor government a two percentage point advantage over the news poll number. Dennis Shanahan was talking quite a bit about the primary vote. What have you got there? Again, from what I understand uh, of what you just heard from Dennis, uh, news poll has Labor with a primary vote of 36 per cent. We have Labor with a primary vote of 39 per cent. So that's a pretty big difference uh, in such a tight election probably uh, the difference between Labor scraping back and Labor losing power. And uh, is there any way to explain that difference? Uh, I don't uh, have the detail of the news poll, uh, obviously, uh, except uh, I could simply observe this. Um, if you look at all the evidence assembled in front of us, which I think is the, the smart way to do it, there have now been 10 telephone polls in 10 days uh, if you set news poll aside for a moment, those ten polls, including the Nielsen po poll in tomorrow's papers, including the Morgan poll out tonight, and including the Galaxy poll in the News Limited tabloids today, uh, all ten of those polls have come down between, with, with Labor between 51 and 53 per cent of the two-party primary vote. So the Nielsen poll is right in the middle. Now, we have ten saying 51 to 53 uh, gives you, a, I think, a, a fairly strong clue and a fairly steady uh, range to say that on the national vote share, at least, Labor goes into this with a slight advantage. I think also the betting markets, um, uh, the evidence there is pointing to the same sort of outcome, which is um, Labor scraping back with a much reduced majority, but the most likely outcome is, I would submit on all the evidence that we have to hand, um, a narrow Labor victory. How does all of that square with what the parties themselves are discovering with their own internal polling? Well, as far as uh, we can glean, the, uh, that sort of range of 51%, 52% two-party preferred in favour of Labor uh, does line up with what the, the party strategists are telling us that their own national polling is finding. Can I just add this thought too? Um, anybody that's... Uh, uh, saying or making the claim that the coalition uh, will win or can win in their own right on these numbers uh, would, would really have to look at news poll and news poll is the, really the only uh, source of support for that contention. Otherwise, there isn't any objective, credible uh, evidence that would point to that. I mean, of course, let, you know, let's take a step back. In, a, in an election this tight, anything could happen, but we're talking about, about a balance of probabilities here. Uh, let me ask you what I asked Dennis Shanahan, which is what did you make of the campaign overall and the performances of both of the leaders? Well, I thought it was a pretty funny campaign, um, uh, right down, to, the, right down to, to, um, to Tony Abbott, the man going to bring us a grown-up government, was pulling an all-nighter uh, last night and hanging out in the, uh, in the, in the various late-night haunts of uh, nocturnal Sydney. Um, <laughs> I, I thought that was pretty funny, but most of the humour, of course, in entertainment has come from the Labor side. Um, <laughs> the ghost of Kevin Rudd. The, uh, the sort of um, you know random blurtings of Mark Latham. I mean, it's pretty been a pretty um, been a pretty funny, uh, a completely wild sort of campaign in the theatrical sense. In the political sense, it's been a relatively low stakes campaign. We see neither party with a big transformative um, reform agenda. Uh, the really the differences have come down to uh, broadband and the mining tax as the two really big uh, dividing points. The conduct of both the uh, the leaders, I think, has been uh, has been pretty good. Do the poll numbers, as you describe them, with Labor having that slight edge, indicate that Labor's uh, strategy to campaign on the idea that Tony Abbott is a risk uh, is sort of hitting home with voters? Well, Labor went into the election with a, a stronger lead than they have now. Uh, now, among the many influences on a campaign and on the outcome. I would suggest, in my view, what we've seen is uh, the Liberal Party has contained the image of Abbott as a risk, um, but the Labor Party has had a lot of trouble containing the concept of Labor as trustworthy. 
uh, particularly uh, Labor's been battling with the whole uh, Rudd betrayal question, uh, followed by the um, Labor states, uh, Labor trust question. So while risk has been a factor for Abbott and the Liberals, they've contained it. And I don't think Labor's done so well on the question of trust. And I did ask Dennis Shanahan to pull out his crystal ball, so I'd better do the same for you. Do you have any sort of tip or prediction you'd care to make? Well, I would simply look at the assembled evidence on the, on the, on the preponderance of the, the weight of both the betting markets and the polling. Uh, you would have to say the likely outcome uh, is a narrow Labor victory. We'd, we'd probably, on those polling numbers, again, setting news poll aside because their primary vote and their two-party preferred vote are out of line with the other ten telephone polls of the last ten days. Uh, you'd have to say you'll see a uh, Labor loss of um, uh, something around the nine to twelve seat mark, uh, but just barely clinging to power. That would be where the, the balance of probabilities lies. Of course, you're asking me to be very bravely because um, in 24 hours we'll actually know. <laughs> well, we shall look forward to that. Peter Harcher, the political editor of the Sydney Morning Herald, thank you very much. Pleasure, Lee.